Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sue Finley and today I'm going to be doing a pastel drawing of a dog on pastel matte paper or pastel matte board I should say. Now this is my first time using this board and at this stage I'm not sure what to expect although I have heard really good things on YouTube and other artists who've been using it so I'm excited to see how it fares with my pastel pencils. Now I'm using Faber-Castell pastel pit pencil pencils and so and I'm also using for the background some cheap Montmartre um, block pencils just to get the base of the colour down first so without further ado let's get into this drawing now as you know pastels can be quite messy and you can normally get quite a bit of dust from them so as always I, when I'm working with pastels I work from the farthest corner from my drawing hand which is obviously my right hand so I work on the left hand side and then work my way down. Now so far I'm seeing that there's not a lot of dust coming from the pencils which is a good sign and I'm getting some really good colour going down onto the board quite easily so I'm, I'm quite pleased with how that's looking so far. So first of all my first impressions are pretty good I'm liking how the colours going down as I've just mentioned but I also like how easy it is to blend and smudge with my finger so I'm able to move and smooth out the colour and get it into the grain without it showing too much grain with my finger and I'm also finding that layering lighter colours on top is pretty good also. And I'm not having to use a lot of pressure to build the initial colours on top. So we'll see how we get on with adding extra layers, but so far, so good. So I'm just going to speed this up so you can start seeing some of the layering processes that I do on this ear. So while working in pencils I like to work in small areas at a time and so next I'm going I'm moving on to the eye and I like to concentrate on like I say small areas and I will work on each area until I've got it to the level of detail that I want. So I start with putting the base colours down once again and I'm going to then build the colours up on top. So once the base colours are down I then like to start adding highlights to the eyes and some shadows and dark areas as well to make the eye pop. Now when working on eyes I look at the shapes in the eye and I try not to look at it as an eye 
because I think that if you start looking at it as an eye, you then start thinking that things should be in different places than they actually are. So if you just look at the shapes, you can see that there's a nice curve, like a slug at the bottom with the lighter brown areas. And I just start building the colors on top. So while when you're drawing it, it may feel that it's not quite looking right. It's not until you step away and look back at that area, then you can see that the eye is working. But you can also see if it needs darker areas and things. So this is important to work on your values in the eye because this really makes the eye pop. So where you have really dark areas, make sure that you're, you've got it nice and dark and where it's light, it's nice and light. And then don't forget, obviously, the highlights in the eye itself. working on colored paper does help to help you with your tones and values so you can put the white down you can start seeing it come together but then you put dark areas down as well and then you start seeing the contrast which then it's the contrast that helps things to stand out so the likes of the eye it helps it to pop so by using a colored or toned paper this helps with the process because if you're working on white you then tend to not put as much white down or if you're working with a black it would be the same you wouldn't put as much of the dark colors down so going for a mid-tone I think helps with finding that balance between the lights and the darks so working on the nose I like to get as much detail in on the nose as possible because I find that the nose is just as important as the eyes because this is where you, you see quite a, a lot of different colours in the nose particularly in, in dogs where you'll get pigment changes in the nose and you got different colours happening there with the different lights and things so I think it's just as important to make sure that you get the details correct on the nose. So I've started out by just sketching in the basic shape of the nose and then I'm going to start placing in the different tonal values to get the darks and the lights and then I'll work on building the colour into the nose.
once I've got the basic colours down for the nose I will come back and work on this further and I'll concentrate more on making sure that the tonal values are correct. So now I'm blocking in more of the larger areas so I'm going to mark out the area of the fur that's white. Now I've found that quite a lot of people struggle with drawing white fur. They will put white down but then they it can look quite flat and washed out because they're then not looking at the the different colours that's in the white and they're not looking at the the shadows and highlights and things so for this I'm actually going to start off with the base colour of the white and then I'm going to work on top and add the different tonal values and the fur and the detail afterwards so just to get blocking initially that colour so then I know which area that I'm working on next. So for the background I'm just using a, a cheap soft pastel stick just so that I can get the bulk of the colour down because I don't want to use my pastel pencils to just put a base colour down so these are just cheap sticks to block in that colour and then I'll come back in with my pencils and then start working on the details. Now they don't, I don't use expensive sticks for the background because I'm going to layer the colours on top. So I'm just going to use a range of different greys and browns to first of all start marking in where the shadows and the different colours are in the fur and then I'll come back later and add the highlights and the details in the fur.
So before I go ahead and work on the detail in this area, I'm going to work on the dark spots that you see the whiskers coming out of. So I'm just going to very carefully just position those on the face and then I'll come back in and add the extra details on top. So for the details in this area I'm using three or four different neutral coloured pencils. So I'm using lights and dark greys and a touch of black and white because there's no colour in this area on this particular reference photo but sometimes it can add, a there could be a little bit of blue in there or a little bit of purple or red so it, look at your reference photo and double check to see the colours. Sometimes it helps if you mask off the areas around the face so that you can look at uh, the area close up in detail to then see what colours are in there. I'm also making sure that when I'm pulling the, the shapes of the fur that I'm following the direction that the fur grows and I'm just layering those on top. Now you don't have to do absolutely every individual hair, it's just given the impression that there's multiple hairs there. And so we're just gonna work over the top and just build those up so that you get the feeling of the movement of the fur and the, the color and, and makes it feel real. Now even though my reference photo was not a very good photograph, I was able to still put those, that level of detail in because I've done so many pet portraits in the past I know how the fur moves on the animal so it just makes it a little bit easier for me to then pull in that detail. Now I'm going to continue around and do the same for the rest of this area and I'm just going to add small sections at a time to then build up on those layers. So before I go into too much detail around the fur of this eye, I'm actually going to draw this eye in and again I'm going to look at the values and make sure that I've got good tonal depth with it so that the, we've got good contrast and it makes the eye stand out and pop and then it's going to help then when I go back and do the detail in the fur around the eye.
So as you can see the pastel mat is working really well to build those layers up and I'm really impressed with this paper stroke board so far. I'm really happy with the level of detail I'm able to achieve. I've been put off using pastels in the past because I've struggled with building the layers and getting the results that I'm after and so I think with the pastel matte paper it definitely takes the drawing to the next level so I'm really impressed with it so far. So I'm going to continue on with this and as you can see I've add, added some extra tones and colour behind on the white fur to just show the different colours. Now this is more of a brownie colour than, rather than grey and I'm just building those layers once again. So I'm going to speed it up again so that you can see the process. have to say I'm loving how these colours pop even with the cheap pastel sticks that I'm getting some really good lay down of the colour onto this board so these like I say these sticks are only cheap and they are the colours going down very very well and I'm not getting a lot of dust this this is a bonus because you know yourself if you uh, drawing on regular pastel paper you get a lot of dust and it can be quite messy and I'm finding that the pigment is staying on the board quite well and it's blending super well as well so it's it's for me it's definitely a thumbs up. So I'll continue on with the sped up video so you can see the process. Uh, so if you've got any questions about this or you would like to see more videos like this then please leave a comment below. I would love to hear your feedback. This is the first time that I've really gone into so much detail on my drawings so I would love your feedback on that.
I'm just putting the final touches to this drawing. I'm going to go through it now and just make sure that there's good contrast in the darks and the light areas and that I've got some detail in the fur all over so that it gives it the, that extra texture and I'm just touching up any areas that I feel that I've missed or just needs fixing and I will <clears throat> excuse me and what I also like to do is I like to photograph the piece and then look at it on my iPad or phone because then sometimes you can see things that you've missed or you can see also that perhaps the tonal values are not quite right so you can then go back and fix that before finishing. I also like to leave it overnight and come back with fresh eyes the next day because sometimes you see things that you don't see the first day so I'll do that also. So if you like this video and would like to see more videos from me then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me grow the channel. Also if you have any comments or you would like to see anything else then please feel free to leave a comment below also. So until next time, bye for now.